In this video, you are going to learn everything you need to know to get started on Restoration Shaman in Cata Classic. You're going to learn the best race, talents, glyphs, gear, professions, and of course the macros to get you instantly ahead of the competition. Okay, so before we start, if you want a fresh UI for Cata using our brand new skill capped add on, be sure to check out our updated classic site at skillcap.com. We've got literally everything you need to make sure you don't fall behind in the latest expansion, including specialized guides at your fingertips from rank one players, which will teach you exactly what you need to master your class. From maximizing damage to mastering CC and more, everything is covered. And while everyone else is going to be slowly figuring everything out themselves, you can skip this process with Skillcat quickly putting you ahead of the competition. So much so, in fact, that we literally guarantee you'll gain at least 400 rating when actively using our service. So join us today using the exclusive discount link in the description below. Anyway, let's get back to the video. So let's kick things off at the character select screen where it's time to choose your race. Restoration Shaman has two main options on the Alliance side. Your default pick will be Draenei. The extra 1% hit and gift of the Naru are two very powerful racials as they provide some additional healing, and while you won't gear for it, it can help you land some offensive spell casts. Dwarf could be another option for the Alliance, especially if you're anticipating to be the kill target as this is incredibly strong into rogues and ferals. Stone form will cleanse you of any bleeds, poisons, or diseases, but it won't remove any magical debuffs and curses. Now, this could be useful in removing debuffs such as wound poison or for dealing with feral druids. If you're wanting to play horde, then you're limited to literally a single option, and that option being orc. This is simply because of the stun reduction that's provided. And while troll and goblin do give some haste, it isn't useful enough to justify taking over the stun reduction. And while all three races are a solid pick for restoration shaman between the horde and the alliance, we do highly recommend Drain Eye for general play, as the 1% hit will really help with your gear. Talents work slightly differently in Cataclysm, so let's break down everything that you need to know. There are two builds that you have the option of playing. The first build we're going to go over is the Ghost Wolf build. This is the build that we recommend as it will be more impactful into a wider variety of comps. This is referred to as the Ghost Wolf build because of the Ancestral Swiftness talent. This makes your Ghost Wolf instant cast and increases the movement speed when in Ghost Wolf. This build also has Totemic Reach, meaning that when we kite, we don't have to move our totems. This can save us from having to shift out of Ghost Wolf when being targeted. This can make it extremely easy to kite melee and other targets trying to attack you. Now, if you go and watch our Restoration Shaman course at skillcap.com, you're going to find out how to kite and survive like a pro. There aren't many flexible talents in this build, but if you wanted to be more mana efficient, you could consider dropping Totemic Focus for Focused Insight. This is going to reduce the cost of your next healing spell after using a shock spell. The second build is called the Wind Shear build. Instead of going into the Enhancement Tree for Instant Ghost Wolf, you're going to go into the Elemental Tree to get Reverberation for 10 seconds off your Wind Shear. This is extremely powerful into Casters and even the Enemy Healer, allowing you to kick them more often. However, into Melee Cleaves, the value is somewhat diminished as the moment you get trained, it's going to be harder to escape without an Instant Ghost Wolf. There are no flexible talents here, as the goal is to get out as many shocks as possible, and most of the talents synergize with the use of shocks. For general play, we recommend using the Ghost Wolf build, as depending on the comp you play, you are going to more often than not be the primary kill target. Along with talents, the Glyph system has changed just a little bit in Cataclysm. Now you're going to have three additional Prime Glyph slots on top of Major and Minor. Your glyphs are fairly set in stone too, but there are some minor adjustments that you can make, and these glyphs are the same for both builds. Your first prime glyph will be the Glyph of Earth Shield. This is a flat healing increase to your most important ability. Your second prime glyph is Water Shield. 
which provides a 50% increase to the passive mana regeneration. And finally, we have Glyph of Riptide. This is another increase to our healing. For your build, you have the same three major glyphs, Stone Claw, Hex, and Healing Stream. Glyph of Stone Claw is crucial for your survival as it gives you a damage absorb when you drop this totem. Glyph of Hex is great as it reduces the cooldown of Hex by 10 seconds. Healing Stream will make it so your totem provides a resistance buff. This is a pretty nice quality of life as it allows you to see if your allies are in range of your totem. You could consider dropping Healing Stream into comps where you feel like you might struggle to survive, and you can consider going Glyph of Ghost Wolf for the extra movement speed. Finally, our minor glyphs are not too important and won't have an impact really on the game at all. So these are really up to you, but we slotted Renewed Life, Arctic Wolf, and Water Walking as none of your minor glyphs will affect the game. All right, next up, let's go over your best in-slot gear for Season 9. First up, let's go over Stat Priority. You'll want as much intellect as possible, which you'll naturally acquire this through your gear. You'll then need 195 spell penetration. This is gonna ensure that your offensive spells, such as Hex, don't miss. After that, you'll want around 1500 Spirit. Spirit is tied to our mana regeneration, and it's gonna help prevent us from going out of mana. After that, you'll want at least 3000 Resilience, although we highly recommend over 3500 Resilience. Hit, Crit, Haste, and Mastery do have some benefit, but they aren't important enough to go out of your way to get, as Spirit is too important. However, when you are gearing up, you'll want Mastery and then Hit, Haste, and Crit in that order if you can't get Spirit onto a particular piece. Okay, so before we continue, we have an exclusive skill cap tip to help you get started in Kata PvP, coming directly from our new Classic course. Similar to our video on how to counter Warlocks, another very important interaction to be aware of is when facing Feral Druids due to their predatory swiftness talent. If you're somehow unaware of what this does, it's a talent that, after using a finisher, will give the Feral a proc that they can then consume on Cyclone in order to make it instant. Now, truthfully, this is the one part of Cataclysm that everybody literally hates. It's insanely oppressive both offensively and defensively. And this is why, as a Shaman, it's our job to try and counter this as much as possible. We have two ways to do this, Purge and Grounding Totem. Before we get into some tricks on how to make this easier though, we're gonna first highly suggest grabbing yourself a weak aura to be able to track whenever Predatory Swiftness is available. Now, there's a couple of tricks to make this mini game a little bit easier. First is to pre-clean the Feral. You wanna try and remove every trash debuff, so that's their Mark of the Wild and any other buffs provided by their team. Not only that, but you also wanna try and keep them clean, so if they rebuff, try to purge again. The sooner we're able to do this, and the more we're able to keep them clean, the more efficient we can be with our purges. Next is to always aim to play at maximum range. The only saving grace about Instant Cyclones is that they're only a 20-yard range, and comparatively, Purge has a range of 30 yards, with Grounding being an even longer range. But by making sure you're standing further than 20 yards away, it makes it much easier to predict when the Feral will Cyclone, exactly like we see here. If we slow it down, we can see that the Feral uses his finisher, gets his proc, but before he can use it, he has to run over to Gizmo. This gives him more than enough time to react, too, dropping a grounding totem to redirect it, but even then, he was far enough away that he could have even used Purge if the Feral was cleaned. As for preventing Cyclones onto your team, range isn't going to help much. But what you can do, aside from keeping them clean, is to dedicate any time where you could otherwise be playing offensive to purely focus on just preventing Cyclones. So that's things like pre-purging the Feral and holding grounding to drop specifically for on your team's offensive ghosts. As preventing Cyclones is almost always going to be far more beneficial than any other ways you could be contributing offensively. If you want to learn more tips like these, then check out our brand new class courses at skillcap.com by using the links below. In Season 9, 
All of your best in slot gear is going to come from PvP. Restoration Shaman is a common kill target, and you'll be thankful to have the extra resilience. Your main pieces will be the Vicious Gladiator's Wartide set, which includes the Vicious Gladiator's Ringmail Armor, Gauntlets, Spalders, and Helm. You're going to use the standard Vicious Gladiator's male leggings over the tier leggings, as we'll only need the four set and the standard legs have better stats. For your off pieces, you'll want Vicious Gladiator's Drape of Diffusion. Your bracers will be Vicious Gladiator's Armbands of Meditation. You'll then use Vicious Gladiator's Waste Guard of Meditation in the Waste slot. And finally, to round out our off pieces, you have Vicious Gladiator's Sabatons of Meditation in the Boot slot. For your weapons, you're going to be using Vicious Gladiator's Spellblade in the main hand and Vicious Gladiator's Redoubt in your offhand. The Relic slot will be occupied by the Vicious Gladiator's Relic of Salvation. For your jewelry, you're going to want to pick up the Vicious Gladiator's Pendant of Meditation. For your rings, you'll want to grab the Vicious Gladiator's Band of Dominance and Accuracy, and this is where a majority of our hit is going to come from. Finally, for your trinkets, use the Vicious Gladiator's Medallion of Tenacity. You'll then use the Dark Moon card Tsunami. If you find yourself struggling to survive, you can drop this for a Battlemaster Trinket. When it comes to reforging, you're not going to need to do much. The goal is to stick to your stats. You can reforge for more spirit, but you shouldn't need this, although you can reforge spirit to mastery for bigger heals if you're struggling. With your gear sorted, let's get everything gemmed and enchanted. Your best enchants will not change as the expansion progresses. Your helmet enchant, Arcanum of Vicious Intellect, comes from PvP, so it's going to be relatively easy to obtain. Your second enchant is Greater Inscription of Vicious Intellect for your shoulders. This too comes from PvP. Then head to the Auction House, where you're going to be picking up the rest of your enchants. For the chest, you can either do Peerless Stats or Mighty Resilience. Mighty Resilience helps to increase your survivability, but in comps where you might not be the target, the extra stats from Peerless Stats is going to be beneficial. You'll then grab Mighty Intellect for your bracers, Mastery for your gloves, and Mastery for your boots. We don't take Lava Walker because movement speed increases don't increase the speed of Ghost Wolf. We recommend tailoring for your profession, which means your cloak is going to be enchanted with Dark Glow Embroidery. This will allow you to proc extra mana. For the remaining slots, embellish your legs with powerful Ghostly Spell Thread, and then put Power Torrent on your main hand and superior intellect on your offhand. Finally, don't forget to get an even steel belt buckle for an extra gym slot. And speaking of which, let's get things gymmed. For your meta socket, you're going to be slotting in Ember Shadow Spirit Diamond. This will provide you with some intellect and increase your mana pool, which can be crucial in some games. In your red slots, you have a couple of options, but your default should be the Willful Ember Topaz. You can use Brilliant Inferno Ruby for more healing output or you can use Willful Ember Topaz for a little more tankiness. In your blue slots, you need to be using Purified Demon's Eye. This gives us spirit for our mana, along with a little bit of intellect for damage. And then in yellow sockets, put Mystic Amber Jewel. This is going to give us a bit more resilience. Professions will matter once more in Cataclysm, and there's a few choices for you. You'll want to go Tailoring and Jewel Crafting. Your first default pick is Tailoring for Dark Glow Embroidery. This enchant provides a massive spirit bonus, which can help you avoid going out of mana in particularly long matchups. Jewel Crafting is our second pick, and this allows us to use the Chimera's Eye gems. By default, you're going to use the Mystic Chimera's Eyes for more resilience, but you can go with the Brilliant Chimera's Eyes for more healing. This reduces our survivability quite a bit, but if you're confident you're not going to be targeted, then this can be a good option for some additional healing. You do have the option of going blacksmithing as an alternative. It is technically slightly less stats in Season 9, but it's going to be more stats in later seasons when we have access to epic gems. Finally, let's wrap things up with every macro. First up, you're going to want focus macros for Hex, Purge, and Wind Shear. These are your main forms of utility, so you want to be able to reliably and quickly respond to any situations. If you're looking to elevate your macros, you can take these and turn them into Arena 1-2-3 macros for Hex and Wind Shear. 
This is gonna give you the most control and speed if you can afford the keybind space. Finally, we also recommend a macro for nature's swiftness to pair it with greater healing wave, as this is our largest heal. You can also pair this with Hex for an instant cast CC. You'll only want to be doing this in situations though where you're very ahead in the matchup as you lose access to one of your biggest instant heals doing it. All right, guys, that about wraps it up for this one. Before you go though, be sure to check out Skill Capped. We are the only service that dares to literally guarantee you're gonna climb at least 400 rating when actively using our service. And uh, well, if you don't, you don't pay. Simple as that. As always though, we wanna thank you all for watching and we'll see you soon.